Welcome in to the Madden 23 first look. I'm Nick Mazesco, and today we're going to get a chance to see some live Madden 23 gameplay for the first time. Our players for today, if you've ever seen Madden YouTube, you know this guy. He's got 1.4 million subscribers over on YouTube. It is none other than TD Barrett. On the opposite side, if you watch the MCS, you know this guy. He is a former number one Madden player in the world. It is none other than Clef the God. And we wouldn't be able to play this game without somebody from the EA side to help us explain some of those new settings. And joining us is Madden gameplay designer, K Spade. Gentlemen, so happy to have you guys along with us. Ooh. You got green. Yeah, I, may, I may have lurked a little bit. I thought I could fit it in there. I thought I used that free form, try to lead it a little to the right. Okay, let's see what I can do here. Nice. Wow. Free Ooh, form. That's beautiful. How do you feel, TD, oh, how do you feel yeah. like that, that free form passing, did, did it, you feel like it helped you in the red zone? Because last year scoring the red zone was so tough. Oh, essentially, you're just looking for open. feel like right there, I pushed that probably, to, like I said, about a yard to the max into like the open zone. Because I feel like in the NFL, like those quarterbacks, it's so crowded in the red zone that you need like a little bit more control, which I that, that's a, what makes that such a cool feature. So much stuff happened on this play. First of all, he let him inside, because if he don't, it's probably, uh, if at best, it's a knockout, maybe even an INT. But after leading him inside, that allowed him to make the catch. Uh, he was at low speed, so that sent him into the stand-up tackle, which uh, the offensive player was able to win. You see the ring go green, and he's able to get like another six or seven yards. But just see one-on-one, -on -one, me having better odds to break it because I got the bigger, stronger player. I think it's cool. I think it make it a lot more football, like more relatable to what you see on, on Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays. It's a laser. Yeah, I feel yeah, like no, I... with cover three, I got way more room to place mm -hmm. passes on like a street. Like anything else the theme, it's like I got more freedom to put it away from the safety or put it away from the corner. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what uh, skill-based passing gives you the ability to do. Uh, you know, we pass lead in Madden for years, but it would be times you would throw a pass and say, well, I felt like I put that, or I tried to lead him, but really it was no way for you to know exactly where you were placing the ball. So placement feels a lot like pass lead in previous years, but now you have visual feedback. You can see your reticle on the field and place the ball where you want to. And we have placement plus accuracy. Now, placement plus accuracy, also, you still have the target area around the receiver. You can place the ball wherever you want with visual feedback. But with the accuracy set and also enabled, you have a small mark on your passing meter that provides a perfectly accurate bullet pass if you hit that while you're passing. With all these, the skill-based passing with these 360 cuts, it seems like the theme this year offensively is just putting so much more control into the user's hands. Yeah, absolutely, Nick. Uh, that's the thing, like agency. We want to give players the control to play the game that they want to play, to play it how they want to play it, and to reduce moments where you feel like, ah, that's not what I wanted, or I didn't try to do that, or I didn't want to do that. We want to reduce those moments. The freeform stuff, like I find it's really like you're literally looking at leverages and like all that stuff a lot more. Like you kind of have to. Here, I, I almost want to try. I don't know. I can't. How many routes you got out there? Lobbed it over oh, the top. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Spade. Beautiful. That was dope. Well, this well, zone coverage. I see any coach adjustments when this zone coverage flipping from uh, match to default. What is the what is the difference in that? Yeah, uh, that's a great great question. We decided to move match and make it a coach, you know, adjustment. So users will have to explicitly say, I, "I want my guys to play match." Now, obviously, once you turn that on, if you call a regular cover three, they're still going to play it like a regular cover three. But we've got plays in the playbook that says cover three match, or you know, it's it's different. Uh, cover four is whether you're paying, playing, uh, you know, palms or whatever. So if you play a uh, match defense, the problem we were having was we had users that didn't completely understand what match was. And it was just confusing. Like we got play art on the field that looks like a cover three and users are calling this and they're trying to figure out why they got DBs running across the field. So 
high level players still like to use match here and there in spots and we give you that control but now for players that don't understand it they're not penalized by accidentally calling a match play and just wondering what's going on on the field okay Clef's, Clef's starting to move the ball oh hello oh, oh let's go that was Kenneth Murray Jr. Good trying stuff. to get a, get a little run game established you know so slow this pass rush down a little slow. bit please dude they're, they're they are cooking off the edge And I'm just noticing a bunch of new animations. Like nothing especially, is like, especially yeah. in those double team tackles. Like you're, it's it's not just like one animation and another animation colliding. It, it is actual like double team tackles and both players being involved. Yes, it, no, definitely. The real beauty of that system, Nick, is that they aren't motion captured two man tackles. Like they are actual one man tackles that another player gets to interact with. And this is something that FieldSense gave us the ability to do. That was beautiful. That might have been the best one of the day. Yeah, I just, Dude. I just led that. But if you can show like where his reticle is in that ellipse, like he had it as far left as he could possibly get it. Mm -hmm. And if he don't do that again, that's maybe a deflection, maybe a INT, but it's certainly not a catch. Yeah, no, that was that was beautiful. Did I go to that guy? And as soon as he sees that, he throws it almost like a seat, like right to the middle of the field. Uh, a lot of power this year. That was, that was. That's why he's the best, man. That's why he's the best. And I see okay. this cover two invert right here, but it looked like cover three. Yeah, man. It's a new disguise play. It's a couple of those has been added to playbooks. High level players like you, Clef, you guys know how to disguise your coverages. You come out, you move guys around, you do a lot of pre snap adjustments. But noobs like me, we come out and we just run the play however it looks. <laughs> So they give us plays like this this year where you see the one high safety, it looks like a cover one or a cover three, and, and they they drop right into a cover two. So the play before Clive, you were the one like two ago. That that was cover that was cover it looked like cover three. That was cover yeah, two. Yeah, it was cover two. It was cover two actually. That's fire. Crazy. Curious though, you talk about this these some of these new plays, the new disguise plays added, uh spade. Does that mean defensive playbooks got bigger or was there some stuff taken out in lieu of those uh, disguise plays? Yeah, we removed some stuff. I mean, we, we definitely have the data to see what plays are being ran, how much of the playbook is being used. And we just felt like we had these, these swollen playbooks with a lot of plays in it. Some of them were the same, like slightly different variations of the same play. And we just did some cleanup. We just went through and removed stuff that people weren't using a lot. We added some new stuff. And uh, we feel like it's going to be a little less intimidating when you look in the playbook. You don't want to see a thousand plays, especially if you're new to the game of Madden. You're looking like, I don't know what to call. So we definitely uh, added some new, removed some old, and, and kept it kept it balanced. Yeah, that throw he just had was kind of crazy. Thanks, Clap. Had a crazy throw. No, he didn't. Oh, my God. Her oh, my God, I clipped oh, it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, I'm, should I go for this though? This, this, is, this is where it's tough. I don't know. I'm going yeah, up against. They, I feel like 1.4 million subscribers want to see you go for this. I think yeah, they, they do too. See. They want to see. I think they do. They want to see a dot. Oh, okay. Gonna be quick thinking. Quick thinking. Quick thinking. Oh yes. Oh. I like to read. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I had to chuck him a little bit with my user. Running that, was, uh, that was fun. Oh, that, was, that was a good half. Yeah. Fade, while we have a, a, a brief moment here, what's a feature that maybe we haven't seen yet? Maybe you're, you're excited to hear people talk about something that's under the radar. I think I'm going to go with defensive evade moves. Like, this is the first time in Madden we've given users a tool to evade blockers in the open field and just try to get around a blocker. And I think it's going to be that slept-on feature that users won't immediately start to interact with they're going to play against someone that's using it and they're going to be like wait what is he doing it and it's going to be that thing that catches on later but just flicking right stick to the left or right if you are a defensive player allows you to sidestep and get around blockers this is something that i expect later toward the end of the cycle you're going to see a lot of users really enjoy with drift logic the, the deep zone on the right if nothing it will play the crosser rather than just going super far back you won't just run to a spot and sit in that spot and do nothing. He's going to go okay. to his spot, and he's going to drift with the receiver.
Okay, Clef, try and play cut? like um. Yeah, play like cover, cover three. Cover three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna good. look for Guyton here. Are you? Do you, you have hard flats out there? Yeah, yeah, I got hard. Yeah. Flats, okay. Yeah. Okay. If this, yeah. Okay. Let's 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 watch. Yeah. 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 He played that. He ran with it. So you can see that the outside third guy take off with the first crosser, and then the deep middle, he started to pick up that second receiver that was coming over. And that's that's new, because last year those guys just dropped to a spot and stood there. Spade, uh, we've heard a lot in the lead-up to Madden 23 about hit everything and these, these stand-up tackles. Tell us a little bit about what we can expect from them and what it's going to add to the user experience. Every time you see two players in a stand-up tackle, it's like a one-off situation. You never know how it's going to resolve. Um, it's also not one size fit all. So you're going to see bigger, stronger players able to get out of that a lot faster than smaller players. It, I think it's really the type of play that can change the game. You can see a ball carrier get in the stand up tackle and fumble the ball. Their fumble chances a bit higher when they're in stand up tackles. This is a, a mechanic and a feature I would keep an eye on going forward. I'm saying you got to be real methodical with your ridge. You got to be really, really quick. There's not enough time to. Mm. It don't seem like you could just run around and buy time no more. You definitely can't. Uh, obviously, if you've got some guys with a special skill set, you could be a tad bit more successful than others. But, we know, last year it felt like everybody was a scrambling passer. And then we heard the community mm -hmm. loud and clear. People were pretty frustrated with scrambling quarterbacks. They were frustrated with escape artists, which is now an X-Factor ability and not a superstar mm -hmm. ability. So, uh, yeah, changes have been made, man. Another interesting thing, we're talking about X factors and, and escape artists being moved to that. Uh, I mean, Clef, you know better than anybody. That's that's going to be huge for the, the MUD community, having that be an X factor instead of falling into one of those superstar ability uh, slots. It, it's going to change how teams are built going into the MCS season. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, because you're going to have to change your office alignment. Now you might use O-line abilities. You know, you might spend more on your O-line. Escape artists, it's going to open up a lot of – it's definitely going to open up a lot of uh, AP space elsewhere to, to spin because it took up a lot in Madden 22. Like, you had to, if you wanted to escape, you had to spend a lot to get it as far as, you know, mm -hmm. AP. So, it's definitely going to change the, the landscape of how teams are built and how guys, you know, use their AP. Well, because it's harder to get outside the pocket. Like, it's all, like, it's going to be, you're going to really have to learn, like, football concepts slant like you're gonna have to throw a lot of quick stuff if you're gonna be successful in this and like stuff like that too seems yeah seems look really and, good and, and, and that was led like this might be the year of the seams i'm not gonna lie the way it these might, seams are looking be. if you can learn to use that 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 skill-based passing you're gonna be able to attack the seams much more easily absolutely Oh, 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 I see you, Ken. I like that. Okay, now we got the. I haven't really done many Anderson. Let's try the Anderson. Let's see if I can run on. Man looks a little. It looks good. It looks, man it looks, looks really good. I, Clef, I think it's safe to say defense in general looks good, man. Like defense defense looks good. Is up. Yeah, defense looks amazing. Like, All right, let's be honest, Clef. If this was. If, oh, no. Not Eckler. Not Eckler just, I mean, was lighting up and everything. That, that's 92 yards. That, that is a 92-yard touchdown, and Ooh. TD Bear just put you on his YouTube channel. Oh, hey, man. I used my, I used the LT thing at the end there. I hit him with the, the speed cut. Yeah, I'm not nervous it. about Austin Eckler, man. Thank he you. He got the new mechanics, downloading them to his database, and he is yeah. out here, man. One thing I'm noticing just watching this, and as somebody who called a lot of Madden last year, and, and I don't know if this was intentional. Uh-oh, stripped. Uh -oh. That's a new strip animation. There it is, peanut punch. Oh, my goodness. That's new. I like that. I like that a lot. Herbert's got that highball ability. He does. He really does. Throw those elite high passes. Back. Oh. Oh, my Back. God. Wow. I like that. I like that. Okay. Like, you threw that, that right at the pylon. That was just a pylon throw. Kind of tried to back, like, sort of back, and it that kind of worked perfectly. Yeah, beautiful. Almost, it almost turned it into, like, a baby comeback. Like, it just sort of yeah. stopped the route. That was like a long handoff. Yeah. That was, that was a crazy throw. 
Because the DB was like running with them and it was thrown by. I, I like that. And so Cliff, free- you hear yeah, TD talking about throwing it up to his big target. It's definitely going to be times this year that the right thing to do is going to be to play the SWAT instead of going for the pick. I'm guilty in the past of always going oh, for the pick. Special teams matter? Get out, McKenzie. Special teams. Does he have Special enough teams. gas, though? Yeah, he's uh, out of there. Special teams. Right. I have a, yeah. Oh yeah, Trey White over there. No, don't throw it. Don't throw over there. Don't I'm not worried about Trey White. Bite. Don't throw the I'm bite. Not, I'm not worried about it. Trey White is over it. there. Yeah, he not even get. Oh yeah. Oh goodness, beautiful freeform pass right there. Here making Jalen Guyton look like Keenan Allen. Good quarterbacks. They, they make. Average receivers look like good receivers. That's Keenan Allen, though. That guy's not an average That is Keenan Allen. Oh, Keenan's Keenan Allen. really good. Okay, let's see. Every AFC West team is watching this being like, I, I don't, don't want to play this team. I don't care about Trey White. No, I do. He, I lied. I lied with you. Yeah, I'm Trey. Trey. <laughs> Dude, I, do. I, I do care about Trey. He, he definitely blocks them. In my, in my head, I was going to throw it, but then I was like, nah, I think it'll be an instant. Please throw it. I'm going to try to pick it and return it. Yeah, no, I think that I think that you definitely would have. No, I care I, I care about Trey White. I do. I do. And that's it. I, I got a little overconfident with Mike Williams. Before we get out of here, guys, I got to get your final thoughts. Uh, TD, what did you feel was the biggest difference or biggest change you noticed uh, from Madden 22 to Madden 23? Free form passing, first of all. Like, just being a, like, zone coverages um lack of you're gonna have to get better and not like if you watch this entire thing there might have been once where we actually got clean out of the pocket and it was because clef like actually made like a really nice play and got out but there was a lot of pocket passing in the game a lot of just like get the ball you're looking to throw it to your running back or like on a seam the running game i like the running game i like the kind of new um the new jump cut and yeah pass everything like i i, I really really liked it that was good yeah, Clef, this this is this feels like uh, from what TD's saying, this is a totally different game from Madden 22 to Madden 23. Yeah, it's it's not even the same. There's nothing you could take from 22 and like bring it into 23 and be like, hey, this is gonna work. You know what I'm saying? It's it's way different from the movement. You know, the, it's way way more user control. Pretty much everything is almost user oriented. If you wanted to be the the ball is really in your court. Like you have so much control with when it comes to the passing, um, the running, how you can just stop on a dime. No more spinning trying to spin to get upfield you can just hit that l2 or lt button and, and get upfield yourself so i i really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to this year yeah I, I don't know about you guys but after watching this i'm ready to get my hands on this game and get into the lab a reminder worldwide release of madden 23 is august 19th get your calendar circled and get ready to get out there on the virtual gridiron